Got the 42 RLE out of a 2006 Dodge or Chrysler 300. All torn apart. Look at that, it's just dripping out its death. Still water mixed in with the fluid, with the wrong kind of pink fluid. Hey everybody, what's going on? Alan here. Welcome back to the Gibson Garage YouTube channel and thank you for tuning in. It has been so much fun being able to make these videos for you guys and be able to communicate with you guys. It's just, it's great. Thank you so much. So, as you can see, we're already getting started. I'm removing all kinds of pieces of the transmission here. Pulling out the front pump, along with all the solenoids on the side already. And uh, we're just going to get right into it and see how long it takes. So, what did you guys think of all that fluid in the last video, if you watched that last video? Anybody got any reasons or answers? I'll tell you, I did find out the answer. I'll show you that here in a little bit. But check out this nasty gray stuff all over this valve body. Again, thanks for tuning in, guys. So I noticed this O-ring. It's just got water squishing out of it. So this O-ring seems to be loose and just kind of falling into the hole here in the aluminum and i think that's where water was getting in it'd be pulling here somehow and yeah got the pump out so let's see if this guy pulls out yes it does and it's heavy <laughs> We're on our way. It's pretty gross in there. These pump bolts are kind of covered in metallic film. Look at this. That's so gross. Ugh. So bad. But we've got the big pieces apart. I just gotta pull the valve body out now, I think, so I can get the other piece that's inside out. Kids aren't there grinding on the rail. Ooh. Turn it the wrong way. So much stuff coming out of here. All right, we got uh, almost everything out. We got this last clutch pack in here we've got to get, but a couple things have to be removed first, like this parking pawl, and I think this accumulator, either one or the other or both. Here's a couple other accumulators too. These springs just come out, and then uh, with a little bit of air, these pistons, or your finger. Ew. Gross. Huh. I got a piece of it. That's going to have to work. 
Ooh, got it. We gotta get some clips out of here to get these, to get this last ring pack out. There we go. So we lay this face down. And this ring here is ready to come out. Don't know what that is. We'll lay that in that direction. Then you got a planetary gear set with a few frictions attached to it. Yeah, some of them. Set that like that. See if we can fish out a few more. Is that right? Oh no, no, that's the second. That's the second clutch pack held in with another clip. They are talking about the thicker one, I think. We'll see if that one will be as easy to get out. Oh my goodness. I just don't want to break it. Lay it down like that on top of those. Now we got this big heavy duty ring. Let's set it separately actually so we I know what I'm doing here. Now this whole clutch pack can come out. down we'll inspect it all for damage after I get it out in the light what the another dang ring there boy you just come on out of there now layer them now how about you feel like coming out now hey got ourselves a clutch pack That's where the parking pole is when you put something in park. That's it right there. Oh, I've got this bad boy. And I did order a socket. Look at the size of this guy. In your face. Four inches. Oh, I can't hold it. Oh, I can't do it, Captain. Whoa, whoa, easy. Got my hands. Not only a socket works. Ready? Ooh. Ah, man. Okay, ready? Oh, oh my shit, God, I'm going to knock that stuff right off the edge. Can't do that. That would be bad news bears. <laughs> well, we got to, I don't want to knock it out of order. I think the wrench just slipped. Yeah. Put this parking pole back in. Oh my god. Okay. Mm. <laughs> oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Well, that's tighter than they advertised. <laughs> And yeah, I couldn't get those dimples out quite enough, so I think we're just gonna have to wait for the socket to show up. Now, after you pull this drum out, there's an air passage in there. You can put some air in there. 
to pop this guy out, but I am waiting on the socket. So I'm kind of just looking for things to do at this point. So that is a bonded metal seal, which I mean, that felt like it was sealing pretty good, but I think I've got a replacement for that anyways. Yep, there it goes. Easy peasy. Piston and nasty old spring. Ugh. Look at that. It's terrible. Well, that's pretty much it for the case until I get that socket in. I think there's nothing in here really I would even need to take apart. Uh, or a reason to take this out of there. Except for maybe this bushing in the center. It does kind of look like it's got some chips taken out of it. So, I mean, the socket's on the way. I'm going to take it out. But for now, I'm going to set it aside. There's no more clutch packs. The only reason you really want to take this out is to either replace that bushing, replace the bearings and the races on the back side or on either side because it's like a tapered bearing set up like in a wheel bearing. Uh, you know, and then to inspect the play on these sticks and wheeler gauges, but everything in here feels really good i spun everything around and there's no chips or anything no damage that i can tell for now let's move on to this other pack um the front clutch pack but first i wanted to show you guys this finally something unique to the chrysler 300 or at least maybe it's unique to two-wheel drive uh you could probably find one or two two-wheel drive jeeps out there but not a lot but in my case there is usually a snap ring in here for this long shaft right here but there's no ring groove in this shaft this shaft is hooked up to this output or you know this tail housing and there is a snap ring down in there so I'm not even sure how this would come out. But again, those are just bearings in there. We start by removing that snap ring way down in there maybe and see if it comes out. Yeah, so no snap ring is my point. All right, we'll start taking this front pack apart and then we'll take a look at all of it and you know, just see what's going on. So there's some bear bushings in there. I know I ordered some bushings, I don't know exactly which ones I ordered. It feels really nice and tight. I think those bushings are going to be in good shape. Then there's this guy. Snap ring holding in this big old plate of a ring and then the clutch pack can come out. It looks like, god that thing is ice cold. It's so cold. It's like holding on to an ice cube. Put that face down. So maybe I'll set that right there. We'll start a new stack. Okay, we got a, a notch every other place. But they do not line up with these. They are opposite of whatever those tabs are. Just... Okay. Look for any identifying marks. Aside from these notches being opposite of these, I can't tell anything. It's sharp. This clutch pack looks like it's in good shape so far. Oh, I see. There's a bunch of these. I'm just going to have to yank on this one to get it out. That's a big guy that opened up. Okay. Some more milkshake. Mmm. This clutch is a little burned up back here on this side of the plate. Back half of it, anyways. Yeah, 
smoked up the back half of this back clutch pack in the front clutch pack. I'm gonna be honest with you guys, I don't know what gears are these are, so sorry. But they're all getting replaced, I think. Ooh. More snap rings. Did you guys see this thing pop out? That was scary. Look at the size of that spring. How many of you are waiting for that to happen? Well, there's one more in there. Another clip like this. But I'm wondering if that's under spring load too, so. Very last piece here to pop apart. Just need a little bit of air. Oh, oh, stay up. No, no stay. I'm just gonna grab it off it. Oh gosh. Well, it's almost done. Come on. And then we'll be ready. Come on, don't pop again. Oh, again! Okay, we'll take a look at what we got here. All of this mess. Now, this is everything. And nothing really looks too bad mechanically. We're in good shape for the most part. I mean, really, I would like to just replace the frictions and the steels and throw it back together. But, you know, these things have an inherent problem with these inner seals. I don't know which one, some of them, or one of them, maybe, or all of them. But it's these seals right here, like that, in one of these clutch packs that tend to go out and lose pressure and that's what causes the shuttering so we're gonna of course fix those we're gonna not go this deep and not replace everything that we can uh having said that i really don't want to replace any of these little brass bushings they all look absolutely great uh, with the exception of one there was one I think in here had looked like it had some chipping on the edge of it but I'm not worried about those so much as I am about these little bushing things all of these are worn out showing multiple layers of color there that one there's one underneath there's this four prong one also and then there's a bunch of these flat bearing washers, you know, so we gotta just check them out, make sure all look good. These have two of them. And they just kind of, they just sit. So you gotta make sure you don't get those mixed up. Flipped over in the wrong direction. But they're all over the place inside this shaft and I don't know, all over the place. Then you got some uh, accumulators and what the best way I heard these explained were like shock absorbers for the pressure as you shift gears. The fluid pressure coming in so it doesn't shift so hard. This spring will take up the shock of the fluid hitting the solenoids and changing the gears and all that so it's not so abrupt. So this is where shift kits come into play, is you change out this spring to purposely make it stiffer, uh, you know, one way. And then there's, of course, there's the valves themselves that are hiding deep inside here. Uh, but there's the pump down there. Of course, here's a bunch more of these nylon seals around this thing. Those are, those look like they're chromed. That's interesting. These might be <laughs> the ones that go bad. These have a weird finish on them, like they've been polished. These guys are really smoked. This clutch pack. Let's let me get the paper. I'll tell you which is which here. So here's a shot of that paper. 
you want to take a screenshot of this and study it. So that'll help me put everything back together. Make sure I'm putting everything in the right positions. So it looks like the one that burned up is the low reverse clutch here. And then that would be my two to four. Okay, and then the next pack you've got, this is your reverse clutch, just this tiny little two pieces here, two friction plates and one steel. The other one that kind of burned up, that looks like, that's the overdrive clutch. The ones that burned up were the low reverse and the overdrive, a little bit burned up. Here's a shot of that paper again. It starts with the left and goes all the way to this paper. And you can see the arrows go down and start back over. Go down and start back over. You can find this online. It's easy to find. Just Google up, uh, you know, 42 RLE exploded diagram and click on images. And it's like the first thing that shows up and download it or print it or look at it or whatever. So while I spend time off the camera to clean all this stuff up and scrape the gasket material for the front pump and and clean the bolts and all that good stuff, uh, why don't you guys leave some comments, give me some thumbs up, share the video, please. Let me know what you guys think. By the way, this is a quarter million mile transmission. Literally, like 240 something I don't remember but close enough to say quarter million miles on this thing I couldn't tell you if someone's been in there or not I don't know how long the flu has been pink I don't know if it happened while it was sitting here you know out there with a blown engine before I ever made it to the junkyard to grab the new engine I don't have the answer for any of that water business I know how it came in now finally so it's the result of that old seal uh, right next to the dipstick tube and then probably the dipstick tube grommet itself that was real loose that practically fell out on a real flat surface a water pool there who knows how long who knows i know that a transmission was driving like that ever since i put the motor in and started driving it so i never knew any other way i don't have any way to compare it and i couldn't find the old guy to ask him if it was doing that or what so so all we can do is just clean it up replace all the uh, contaminated friction plates and and steel plates and uh, and cross our fingers but until then like I said leave me some comments and in the next video we'll be putting everything we just pulled apart all that stuff back together um, the seals, O-rings, nylon seals, and all that stuff. We'll put everything all back together with new stuff. And in the third video, we'll get into the shift kit for the valve body here. And yes, I do have a new torque converter on the way. But that's going to do it, guys. Thanks for watching. I appreciate it so much. So much uh, help. Just so much talking, so much comments, so much connectivity. It's pretty awesome. It's fun. Um, keep, keep it up, please. You guys are making it wonderful. Have a good one.